Yo, what's going on everybody? It is straight out of Boston here, aka the King of Boston. Say we're back for episode 36 of the Georgia State Dynasty here on NCAA Football 14. And today we have a very tough road game against the BC Eagles. BC is not like a tip-top program, so to say. They're definitely not like national title contenders or anything. But um, they're still a pretty good program. They went 7-5 and five this year in real life. And uh, it's like an 85 overall team, really like good 75, so... It's going to be a tough game, and I edited this, so I recorded this gameplay with my Elgato Game Capture HD, and I just got the Elgato, and I was still kind of tinkering with like some of the software stuff or whatever, so this uh, stuff I actually had to edit in the, uh, in the Elgato software, so there aren't going to be transitions, and uh, I don't know how the quality is going to be, hopefully it's going to be good, um, fingers crossed, but uh, nonetheless, BC's driving here, it's a 7-yard pickup for Kyle Oliver, and you're going to see there's no transitions in between the clips, just because I don't know how to do that in the Elgato software, I don't know if there's a way, but nonetheless, Suntrop is going to drop back, fire over the middle, caught by Mike Giacone for the 7-yard pickup on 4th and 5 as they convert the 4th down conversion, 1st and 10 shotgun set, Christian Suntrop is going to hand it off to Miles Willis, the senior star running back for the BC Eagles, he's a sophomore in real life, and he's looking really good for them this year, backing up Andre Williams, he gets carried from time to time, and he's looking really, really good. Suntrup is going to end up scrambling here. He finally gets brought down for a loss of four yards. That's going to set up fourth and seven. And this time, they're going to kick this one, attempting the field goal here. It will be from about 40 yards. The kick is up, and it is way wide to the right. It doesn't even get there in distance, so uh, I don't really know what was up with the kicker there. He must have been hurt or something. But uh, I don't know, because the wind was only like three miles an hour in the opposite direction. So I don't know what was going on. But uh, here you can see the studio update. Iowa does beat Iowa State 28-21. to They do survive, and they improved it to another number 18 in the country. There's a nice pass to Ross Jackson, a six-yard pickup. Good job of Jeremy Johnson realizing that the cornerbacks were backed off. Audibling to the hitch route and allowing for a nice pickup. Kyler Neal is there for a 12-yard pickup. He is looking to uh, have a good day trying to hold over his starting role as Blake Gardner has looked good in spurts and uh, he could be fine for some carries at some point. Paul Walker is there for the 15-yard reception and now on first and 10. We have a read option coming up here to the pistol. Johnson keeps it, goes up the middle and picks up about 10 yards. That will give him first and 10, now third and five. Shotgun set looking for slants over the middle. Fires it caught by Ross Jackson for the seven-yard pickup. That's a new first down for the Georgia State Panthers. Now another read option coming up. This is going to be a handoff to Kyler Neal. Neal cuts his way up the middle for the 10-yard gain. That will set up first and goal inside of the five-yard line. Here is another read option. It's a Jeremy Johnson keeper, and he gets his way into the end zone for the touchdown. And Georgia State... Looking good early, they have a 7-0 lead as we would convert this extra point despite the uh, the apparent, I guess, tough kicking conditions as you might think after that last field goal attempt by BC. Here comes BC on the next possession. Miles Willis up the middle off the handoff from Christian Suntrup. That's a 14-yard pickup for Miles Willis. Now third and six, shotgun set, three wide for the BC Eagles. And he's going to drop back. He will look for Miles Willis on the screenplay out of the backfield. He goes down the sideline across the 45, 40, 35, 30. He gets brought down inside of the 30-yard line. It's a 32-yard pickup for the senior halfback. First and 10 for the Eagles. It is going to be a play action. It's a screen, and it's intercepted by Cameron Melton. The transfer, he's going to go all the way into the end zone, reading that screen beautifully and taking it home. No blocks needed. But wait, there's a flag on the play. Let's see what this is. Personal foul clipping on Georgia State so this one's coming back we do get the ball but Will C Cunningham does it on a play when we just we didn't even need the blocking uh, what are you doing Will Cunningham I don't even understand why you would clip there but nonetheless we find Kyle Rucker there on the check down on second and one that's going to be a 16 yard pickup Keith Rucker excuse me the fullback and now Jeremy Johnson's going to scramble to the right side he's looking he's going to take off on his own across the 40 inside of the 40 runs that amounts to avoid the hit now he's a play action on second and one Johnson is going to scramble to the left side. He is looking. He's got no one, but he's got some room to run up the left side. He gets hit hard, but he picks up a nice 15 or so yard chunk. Now first and 10 from the 26. Johnson looking for Kyler Neal on the screenplay. Neal across the 20. He will get down to about the 16-yard line on a 9-yard pickup for the halfback. And now second and one split halfbacks in the shotgun set. Here is a triple option. It'll be a hand up to Blake Gardner. And Gardner whiffs his way up the middle into the end zone for the 16-yard touch. And I talked about how Blake Gardner has looked good in spurts. And there he is once again showing his speed, showing his agility, showing it's just his ability to run the football. But 
Nonetheless, 14 0 now Georgia State on top. We come back on our next possession, an eight yard pickup for Kyler Neal on first and 10. That'll set up second and two. Now later in the drive on third and five, shotgun set. Four wide, Johnson is going to end up looking to the left side, caught by Jordan Giles, the man who really never seems to get a lot of recognition out of this wide receiving corp, but he's been there all three years now, and he's been solid throughout, so here is a play action on a uh, read option, I should say, and Jeremy Johnson picks up nine yards, now Kyler Neal in motion on the next play, second and one, it's going to be another read option, and Johnson will keep it, pick up about seven yards, and he gets the first down on the play, and the offense continues to drive here as we're getting close to the end of the second quarter. Jeremy Johnson will drop back. He's got some time. Fires it left side. Incomplete. Paul Walker cannot make the catch. That'll set up fourth and seven. We're going to bring in a field goal unit. You can see the wind. It's only like three miles an hour. So I don't know what was going on with the BC kick earlier. That kick is up and good. And we extend our lead now. Three possessions. It is 17 nothing. But here we go. Late in the second quarter, we're going to have to punt it away from our own end zone. D.D. Austin's punt is going to go to about the 50. Marcus Powell is there. Kyle Flowers is not going to get off his block to make the tackle. And Marcus Powell picks up 16 yards on the return. Now with 21 seconds left, BC has a chance to score. Christian Suntrup looking to the left side. Caught by, there he is, Brian Miller for a 9-yard pickup. As they're looking to get at least a field goal out of this. 9 seconds left, 8 seconds. Clock is ticking. Suntrup looking left side. Caught by Grant. And that is going to be a touchdown for the BC Eagles. They get on the board with Marcus Grant here at the end of the second quarter, at the end of the first half. They put six up, and here comes the extra point, and here's their kicker once again. And I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what's going on. He must be hurt or something, but he misses that one. So that's going to set up a 17-6 ball game as we head into the half. Georgia State on top by 11 points. Looking good in Boston College. I've talked before about how this team does not do well on the road, and these next two games are going to be really, really tough at BC and then at Oregon. So this is a really tough stretch, and BC's playing well. If we split these games and come out of this 2-2, two and two, I'd be pretty satisfied with that. So here we go, first and 10. We get the ball to start the second half. Four verticals. Johnson scrambles to the right side. He finds Kyle O'Neill, though, on the check down. You always got to be looking for those check downs on those four vertical plays because they're always going to have a lot of room to run, and it's a 14-yard pickup for Kyle O'Neill. Now on third and five, pistol formation. Johnson's going to run play action. Scrambling to the right side, caught by Justin Wagner, the other sophomore wide receiver that doesn't get us talked about is Ross Jackson, but he makes the nice catch, and it's a 44-yard pickup, a huge yard after catch play. Now third and seven, shotgun set for Jeremy Johnson and the Panthers. He will drop back, look over the middle, caught by Rufus Warren, who breaks the tackle and barrels his way into the end zone, falling over as he gets there, looking like Rob Gronkowski on that play, as it is a 13-yard touchdown for the six foot eight freshman Rufus Warren. He is looking good early on, making some nice catches, providing some good size. I really like what I've seen out of him. Hopefully he can be a big piece for the future. Suntrup is going to end up getting tackled. A beautiful tackle by Scott Powers. They're saving the first down. That'll set up fourth and inches, and they would punt it away. So we get the ball back, looking to extend our lead once again. Jeremy Johnson fires left side, caught by Ross Jackson, makes a man miss, and will get across the 45-yard line. A huge pickup for Ross Jackson on the curl route. Now second and six. Here's a counter play to Kyler Neal with the shotgun. Neal will pick up a huge chunk, nine yards on the game. That's going to set up first and ten. Shotgun set. Johnson going to drop back. Look. Left side caught by Jackson. Another curl route. We've been utilizing those curls so far today. It's a 15-yard pickup here for Ross Jackson. His fourth catch of the day. Now here is a triple option. And up to Kyler Neal up the middle. He's going to get down to about the two-yard line inside of the five, that is. For a 13-yard pickup, he's got 75 rushing yards in the day. Nice to see out of him. And then here comes a speed option. Johnson will keep it. I really should have pitched it there, but it doesn't matter. Johnson avoids the tackler and gets into the end zone for the two-yard touchdown run. We have extended our lead now. It is 31-6, to a blowout of some proportions here in BC in Chestnut Hill. But can't count BC out just yet as Brian Williams makes the 19-yard pickup right there on the nice throw from Christian Suntrup. And now on second and 10, shotgun set. Suntrup's going to drop back and look. On the out route once again to uh, Brian Williams, another 20-ish yard pickup. That's going to set up third and 11 now later in the drive at about the 36-yard line. Suntrup dropping back. He's looking deep. He's going to heave it up. He'll actually get hit as he throws, and that will be incomplete. Fourth and 11 coming up. They're going to go for it, knowing they're kind of in no man's land right now. Suntrup will drop back. He is going to look left side, caught by Kyle Oliver. Another fourth down conversion converted by the BC Eagles. And now on first and 10 shotgun set. Actually, this is third and four. He's looking for Miles Willis out of the backfield. Willis, he's going to get hit hard right there. But that'll set up fourth and inches. They're going for it once again. Quick throw to Marcus Grant, who gets his way into the end zone. Another fourth down conversion for the Eagles. This one leads to a touchdown, and they cut the lead. 31 to 13 and you can see Louisville after a week one loss looking like they might lose once again down to Kentucky the number 11 team in the country is looking not to be in such good shape right now great wording but 
Jeremy Johnson now is going to scramble to the right side. He's under pressure. He gets sacked for a loss of 12 yards. A bad decision right there. Now laying in the drive, third and 24. Looking to the left side, and that is incomplete. It's intercepted, actually. A huge play right here. This doesn't affect too much field position-wise, but this was a kind of a, mom a momentum swinger. And check out how this is caught. This was pretty incredible. It goes off his hands and then kind of back into them, off his leg, and then he falls on top of Ross Jackson. I'm not really sure if he got in bounds on that, but BC takes over. It's already 4th and 10. Suntrop looking left side, and it's another 4th down conversion for BC as Kyle Oliver makes the 22-yard pickup. A huge play for the Eagles. Now later in the drive, 3rd and 2. Hand off to Miles Willis up the middle. Willis will get hit hard by Scott Powers, but it's a 6-yard pickup. That leads to a new set of downs on 1st and 10. Suntrop is going to drop back. Looking on the screen once again, they've been killing us all day with the screens, and Miles Willis to the end zone. Touchdown, and BC is climbing back in this ball game. They cut the lead now down to 12. They will go for two here as they want to cut this to a 10-point game, making it just a field goal and a touchdown away. I think this is too early to go for two, but Suntrop looking, and that is caught, but Joel Kareem Zugrana, or as I called him to Burns, Joel Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, will end up getting stopped short of the end zone. So here we go on third and 15. Kyle Neal screen plays. He does not get the first down, and we are looking at another punt away with three minutes to play. BC is still in this ball game on fourth and four. We're going to try and kick it low to this guy, make it try to bounce and maybe give them some poor field position, but it bounces right to him. Marcus Powell will be down right about there. Now on first and 10, shotgun set for Christian Suntrop. He will drop back. Looking left side, caught by Kyle Oliver. Another catch for the slot receiver, Kyle Oliver. Now third and two. Suntrop going to drop back. Fire caught by Marcus Grant. A huge hit by Scott Powers, but he gets the five-yard pickup that he needed. It's a new first down. Now on first and 10, Jock Peterson is going to be rushing but he gets that pass away and Miles Willis is there for the seven yard pickup and now on third and four Suntrop will drop back he's going to scramble right side or not scramble right side but throw it to the right side Miles Willis is there for the nine yard pickup he has some nice hands out of the backfield as he's shown today but second and ten shotgun set Suntrop looking for the audible he's going to drop back fire this one over the middle caught by Joel Kareem Zugrana for the nice 14 yard pickup with 40 seconds to play BC can cut it to a one possession game here they're going for the touchdown Suntrop will end up Getting it to Brian Williams, and all of a sudden, this is going to be a five-point game. That field goal and missed two-point conversion and missed extra point are uh, really looking like they're going to bite BC in the butt here. Here comes the onside kick, and it is recovered by Justin Wagner. BC with just one timeout left. We can run the clock out from here. I see I was just pretty relieved at this point to get this win as uh, running around in celebration. A huge win for the program. This turns out to be Georgia State takes it home. 31 to 26, a big, big road win against an ACC opponent. This is a huge win for the program for Georgia State. I am really excited about it. But nonetheless, that's pretty much going to do it. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you did enjoy. Hopefully, I wanted to edit my Elgato software next time around because uh, I know this quality was probably not as good as you might be used to. So, anyway, that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy. So, peace.